everyone. In this video, we are going to be adding servers to Server Manager in our primary server, Server 1. And what we're going to try to do is get Server 2 and our core server listed here so we can control them from Server 1. Um, by enabling this and setting it up here, we can take even our core server, which is doesn't have a GUI, and we can set up Microsoft Management Consoles to remotely control that server with the GUI from Server 1. We'll be able to do the same thing with Server 2, even though it has a GUI. Maybe we just want to be able to control everything from right here without having to bounce from server to server. Um, there are a few things that need to be set up for this to work. Um, first off, obviously, everything needs to be on the same network. Um, that was part of my first video, so if you're just barely getting your server set up, you might want to watch that video first, get everything on the same network. Um, we also need to make sure everything has a DNS suffix that matches all three. Um, put them all in the same work group. Um, we need to configure the firewalls a little bit and set up just a little bit of DNS. I'll show you how to do a local DNS on server one. Um, actually, why don't we go ahead and start there. Since we have our network set up, we know our static IP addresses. So we'll come and set up local DNS right here. Um, C drive, Windows, System32 go into the drivers folder, into the etc folder, right click on hosts, and open with notepad. Um, you'll see that there's quite a bit of text already built into this, kind of explaining what this is for. Um, as it mentions here, comments will be preceded by the pound sign. So anything that has a pound sign at the beginning of the line, the computer or the server will ignore the text on that line. So you can easily comment things out. When you want to actually set up a DNS entry, you need to rem not use that pound sign. Just give the IP address and then the computer or server name. I've set this up with both the basic shorthand server name and then the full server name or the full name with the DNS suffix on the end. So that way I can get to it either way through DNS. Uh, once you've added those, you'll want to save this file, of course, before you close it. Alright, and then we'll jump over to server 2, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just tear the firewall down completely. So, open up the firewall th with advanced security, and you see that everything's off. If yours are still on, hit this properties button, come in and change the state from on to off. This way it will allow pretty much all traffic through um, in a real 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 world environment. You probably don't want to do this, but for just example purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can go and set specific rules in here. Um, primarily, you might want to enable these two for echo requests. This allows you to ping this server. And down here in remote service management, I believe. These will allow you to control this server from server one. So if you want to leave your firewall up, just enable or allow these five services in total. So these three for control and your file and printer sharing echo requests for pinging, five in total. Since I just tore the whole firewall down, I don't need to worry about individual rules at this point. Um, so we'll verify that we have our full computer name with that DNS suffix that matches our original server, our primary server. They're both on the same work group, and so we sh should be pretty much set up for that. Um, if you're using a GUI and you need to set up this full computer name with a DNS suffix, hit your change settings, hit change. Here you can set up your computer name or server name, add your work group, hit more to add your DNS suffix. That will require a reboot. If needed, go ahead and do so. And while that comes back up, we'll look at the core server. And so we see that the core doesn't have a GUI. It's all command line with a few little exceptions where you can kind of get a little window to pop up. Um, took a look at that a briefly, I think, in my first video. Using sconfig, you can come in, you can set your domain, work group, um, computer name, you can't set your DNS suffix in here, but I'll show you how to do that with PowerShell. 
And I know, for example, number 9 here, date and time, will actually pop up a little window that we should all recognize. So you can set your date, time, time zone, all that stuff in there. Alright, so back in our command line, um, first I'm going to go ahead and enable that remote control from server 1. And this is done at the command line, not the PowerShell level. Give the configure sm remoting. It's actually .exe. You can leave the exe off, and you want to do dash get. And this will show you that most of the time, by default, I believe it's enabled. If yours shows that it is not enabled, give it that same command, but instead of get, say enable. Of mine, since it's already there, it'll just confirm it's already enabled. And then for this, as I mentioned, we need to get that DNS suffix. So to do that, we want to get into PowerShell. And we're going to be using NetDOM when it starts responding. There we go. NetDOM. We're going to use computer name, the current computer name. I've already renamed this to 410 server core. We want to do a forward slash add and give it the full DNS suffix in addition to the name here. So be 410 server 2012 local. And so it'll show that it successfully set that as an alternate. We want to go ahead and set that as the primary now. So we're going to use the same command, except add is going to be changed to make primary with a colon. And I'll tell you that it will require a reboot to finish that configuration. So we'll go ahead and go back to our command line and give it a reboot command. So it's shut down, forward slash r for restart, forward slash t for time, zero means do it immediately. While that reboots, we're going to go ahead and add server 2. Sorry, one more thing before we can do that. There's a little bit of PowerShell on server 1 that we need to configure here. And we see them here. Um, these commands, the set item WS man, this sets the other servers as trusted servers. If you're on a domain, I believe you can skip this. It'll automatically identify because they're on the same domain and they trust each other inherently on a domain. If you're in a work group or in otherwise not on a domain, you need to come in here and configure server 1 to trust these other two servers. Otherwise you may have some problems adding them in to your server manager. And you see that I did it with the full name including the DNS suffix and I also did it with just the computer name itself. Uh, I don't... I believe if you have the full name as the primary, you don't need both, so that doing it both ways might be a little bit of overkill. Um, once you've done that, then you can come in here and add the server. Um, because we set up our DNS file earlier, I can just run a search for 410 server 2, and it should pick it up at that IP address that I told it to earlier, really. Um, bump it over here to selected, hit OK, give this a minute or so to connect, and we'll see that it comes online showing that we have management control for that server now. Um, our core server is back online. I don't even think we need to log back into it. It's set up for this. So we go to manage, add another server with that DNS entry that we created, 410 server core. That's right, there it is. Add it and OK. And give it a moment to complete that connection. And there it is. So now we can take either one of these, and we can right click on it and go and add roles. If we want to set it one up as a DNS server or a DHCP server, we can do that. Um, and you can also open up the PowerShell. And so this will actually be PowerShell control over the core server rather than server one. Go ahead and close that. Once that finishes processing, and we'll show that you can use the um, the wizard.
wizard or the little GUI interface to set up your roles for that core server. It doesn't have a GUI on it, so this is an easy way to use the GUI to control it from a different server. And so you can just go through and set up whatever you'd like for your roles and features. Um, and it also has the added benefit of bringing all of our server control to one place so we don't have to bounce back and forth. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them for me below, and I'll see you in my next video.